point estimates give us a single value of an estimator. But interval estimates gives us the range of the values. Practically speaking, when we are dealing with the samples, it's not always easy to get the, get the very accurate point estimate. But having interval estimate give us a wide range of values with certain level of confidence. In this module, we will talk about calculating the interval estimation, estimate for the single mean. It's very important that we understand the sampling distribution of a single mean. As we know that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is normally distributed, which has the mean that is mu x bar, which is equals to the population mean and the variance of the sampling distribution, that is sigma x bar equals to the variance of the population divided by the sample size. This curve shows us the sampling distribution of population mean, where we have the shaded region at the tails talks about alpha by two area. And this area in the middle is one minus alpha, which will be determined by the level of confidence that we are using in calculating our interval estimate. We know regardless of where the distribution of mean is located, approximately 95% of the possible values of the mean constituting the distribution are within two standard deviation of the mean. So the two points that are two standard deviation from the mean are given by the interval mu plus minus two sigma x bar. This will contain approximately 95% of the possible values of the sample mean. Let us examine the composition of interval estimate in the figure given above. It contains in its center the point estimate, that is population mean. The two was recognized as a value from the standard normal distribution that tells us within how many standard error lies 95% of the possible values of the sample mean. Having the distribution of the sample mean following the normal probability distribution, hence z could be used as a reliability coefficient. The last component, sigma x bar, is a standard error of the standard deviation of the sample, which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So in general, when we talk about the interval estimate, it's expressed as the estimator plus minus the reliability coefficient times the standard error of an estimate. So in particular, when sampling is from the normal distribution with known sigma, an interval estimate of mu may be expressed as x bar plus minus z, one minus alpha by two sigma x bar, where z one minus alpha by two is a value of z to the left of which lies one minus alpha by two and to the right of which lies alpha by two of the area under its curve. Here are possible interpretations of the confidence interval. So in repeated sampling, when a normally distributed population with a known standard deviation, 100 into one minus alpha percent of all the intervals of the form x bar plus minus z one minus alpha by two sigma x bar will in the long run include the population mean mu, whereas it has its practical interpretation. That when sampling is from the normally distributed population with known standard deviation, we are 100 into one minus alpha percent confident a single comp computed interval contains the value mu. Let's take an example. Suppose a researcher is interested in obtaining an estimate of the average level of some enzymes in a certain human population. He took a sample of 10 individuals and determined the level of enzymes in them and computes the sample mean of x bar that was equals to 22. He further supposes that the variable of interest is approximately normally distributed with known variance of 45. Here, we wish to measure the interval estimate of, of population mean mu. Hence, an approximate 95% confidence interval for mu can be given by x bar plus minus two times the standard error. 
of mean. Since x bar is 22, 2 times and standard error is population variance divided by the number of observations. The square root of it, solving it, it gave us two values. The first value is 17.76 and the other value is 26.24. This is, in this example, we say that we are 95% confident that the population mean will fall in between 17.76 and 26.24. So in this example here, we might prefer rather than two, the more exact value of Z, that is 1.96. That corresponds to the confidence coefficient of 0.95. Researcher may use any confidence coefficient they wish. The most frequently used values are 0 0.90, 0 0.95, and 0 0.99, which have associated reliability factor respectively of 1.65, 1.96, and 2.58. It will not always be possible to assume that the population of interest follows the normal probability distribution. Thanks to central limit theorem, that if we have enough large sample size, the distribution of, the, of X bar, that is the population mean, it follows the normal probability distribution. It doesn't matter whatever the distribution of the sample is.